Hello and welcome to Edigami's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss current affairs and gazette for today that is 21st of February 2022. Before we begin this discussion, a great conversation happening here, very nice discussion on uh, the uh, on two topics. One of them is related to our feature news for today that is the intellectual property rights and the second one is on the first snapshot that we are going to discuss. So a great conversation. Yes, I noted one thing in particular that is that the issues, the issues in the integrated criminal justice system, this is where you people did not mention the um, in-depth points, we will discuss that. But the rest apart, it was very good. I have noted some people writing really beautiful points. I will not point out because now you can yourself see that, uh, you know, you all are developing here. So really wonderful. However, we start this discussion right now. Good evening, Amlan, Netra, Hima. Rachit, welcome, Bhavani. Rachit, you should have written. Making mistakes is not a problem. See, Ashish makes mistakes, no problem. Hi, Mithun. You also didn't write. Kriti, good. All right, who do we have? Pooja, Amruta. Amruta, good evening to you. Welcome. Amruta, this is the first part where we discuss a couple of uh, questions in the chat. And after that, we begin. And the questions are largely based on what we study on that particular day, based on current affairs. All right. Pooja had posted the questions. All right. Who else? Who else? Vakram, good evening. All right. Hi, Somik. Welcome. Good evening, Ravi. Good evening to all of you. Let's begin this conversation. Interesting conversation for today. What do we have here? The first few updates. First one is on the interoperable criminal justice system. What are its pros? What are its cons? And what has been uh, proposed right now? The second one is green tariff in electricity. Why news? We'll understand. And the third one, neutrino observatory in Thani in Tamil Nadu. What's the news? We will understand. And why so? We will also learn to link these articles to the previous articles covered or whatever was in news in the past. So uh, let's get into the articles to understand further. Uh, this day in history dedicated to International Mother Language Day, right? Our mother tongue. Featured news, inventions and patenting in India. A complete regimen of patenting in India will be discussed. Along with that, we will understand what are the issues in this patent regime, what are the advantages that we have over the other, other patent regimes. And we will also understand various kinds of uh, intellectual property and discuss this in totality. So beautiful feature news here waiting for you. After this, first uh, current affairs discussion. Then uh, a new geek found in... Uh, Meghalaya and it has been named uh, on army, we will understand this in the image. Terms and concepts for today, New India Literacy Program, IBPR, Indo-Bangladesh Protocol Route, Precedence Fleet Review happening today itself and Atmospheric Pressure on Pluto. Okay, editorials, we have two of them for you. One is Weak Investment in Defense Sector and the second one is India-China Row. The case study is on a person from uh, uh, India itself and uh, doing wonders by creating innovations in field of agriculture also awarded Padma Awards. We will understand that. The first update is on uh, interoperable criminal justice system. See, India's criminal justice system right now is fragmented into many kinds of justice system, right? Ben many fragments. So one of the fragments of it is police that deals with reporting of the crime. Then another fragment of it is investigation, again dealing with police only but also dealing with the judges and then we also have judiciary attached. Post that, when, when the person has already become a part of the system, after that when they, you know, reformatory or penal system, whatever they come out of from, so then there's another part of it that is the society, how people deal with it. This is the complete supply now. Right. So, and before that is the crime. Right. So, all of them are fragmented. Suppose crime happens many times, crime is not reported. Even if it is reported, it is the police does not write FIR. Police writes in a notebook and then they don't file FIR. So, th this part is fragmented. On the other hand, when reporting has happened, investigation, the second, third part, it does not happen properly because forensics is not there, because police is not trained, because uh, uh, the data was lost. The valuable times of the research was lost. So this is the third component. And then we have a judiciary attached to it, right? And judiciary takes its own time because 
you know you remember that uh, you know a segment where it said that where i had mentioned that 10 criminals might be you know uh, they might they might be let off free uh, to ensure that one person who is innocent should not get caught right so these are the principles that we follow people are innocent until and until is unaccused right so uh, judiciary has its own delays and after that post in case the person is you know caught or are in trial they are languishing in the jails poorer people so how society treats them look at this all of them fragmented issues right and each of them an issue itself so what the government has proposed here is that they want to create an integrated interoperable criminal uh, system criminal network right and through this network what they want is that all these segments first of all case filing reporting and filing and then police investigation along with that uh, the charge sheeting, police investigation and charge sheeting and judiciary, after that, uh, all of it should be integrated. Integrated how? Why? The same data approach, data flexibility approach. The idea is to create, if we have a crime and criminal tracking network system, CCTNS, and if we have e-code system, right, justice delivery through online, and all the courts integrated can we integrate both of them this is the primary agenda integrating both of them on one side it might seem to be a very good idea but then it has got its own issues right so the good idea is that for example if we have e-filing of uh, the FIRs e-FIRs so we don't even need to look at the police officer to be able to file FIR this is a great move ahead this is already happening right but they want to integrate the system with the judiciary system this system helps uh, in uh, saving the man hours, police man hours in writing the report or writing the FIR itself or case noting, right? Hours and hours are spent in every state doing this activity. So this is one. In fact, there are reports which are suggesting that 90% of the time by police is spent only on case filing and noting. 90%. What about investigation time? So this is one component which gets saved. Then people also, people actually start to report crimes. Right? So these are some additional benefits, right? And then when the whole system is linked to each other, this will ensure that there is a faster transmission of data, what you people have actually mentioned, right? Faster dealing of cases and uh, handling of cases, right? Integrated manner, absolutely correct. Uh, you people have mentioned that in the comments and I really commend that. But what is the issue here is that uh, this, uh, you know, when the police, when the police data is linked with the court data, the person has already dealt uh, or gone through the criminal procedure and they have also received the penalty for it. They have been in jail for a couple of years for this. And their data, right, when they come out of the jail, etc., the police will still have this data because the whole system is interlinked. And this will create a method through which privacy of individuals will be invaded. Privacy will be invaded. Not only privacy, the you know, there will be a scope for further harassment. Do you agree? Yes. Why not? There is a Every individual has got right, right? If you get into the philosophy of why state was formed, any country is formed, they protect the rights of people. And here we are, we are reveling to police system, the complete information, judicial information about that person, right? So uh, we, we are letting people, you know, being vulnerable to harassment. And there is also something, there's also something, something called as habitual offender, HO. These habitual offenders, the police will start to pick them, pick on them, right? So repeatedly they will go to them and they will, even if they have not offended this time, they might, you know, pinpoint those people and then there'll be a problem in this. So that is the reason that on ethical ground, this was also opposed. But then overall, the scheme is only going to move ahead, right? Because largely the pros are more than the cons, right? The merits outweigh the demerits or the issues, right? So what is this interoperable criminal justice system? Interoperable, right? Right now we have fragments and they are all, uh, you know, uh, con conducted online. So phase two of the ICGS product will be under undertaken by the Ministry of Home Affairs and NCRB, National Crime Report Bureau, Bureau, because they are the ones who maintain the criminal records of every person. So yes, good component of this could be the data of the person who has committed a crime it could be deleted after they have gone through the penalty yeah so what is that word the word for this is uh, right to forget isn't it right to forget 
the person should have their right that this data should be forgotten after the you know complete offense was uh, you know, uh, neutralized all right so this is the enabling platform for criminal justice delivery unified platform for all the people so what are the people unified platform so one platform is uh, police the other platform is database right criminal tracking network the, the third platform is e forensics forensics is the science of con con conducting investigation they will also be linked and then e prosecution that means uh, related to courts and prison when all of them are linked the travel of data it will be faster right so uh, right now for forensics people have to move from forensics labs to police station to courts now everything would be conducted online so advantages definitely are there the advantages uh, they outweigh the demerits and that is why they are conducting this phase one and phase two all of them right so uh, a, a person's fir once written that will be one data one entry now that person with that name or that aadhar card only uh, the, oh, you know that same account can be accessible there will be no duplicity of data created so this will make the justice system more effective better record management absolutely better reporting of crimes everything getting you know handled online great effective crime prediction how do you say you know prediction this <laughs> this is the conflict free part you know this is where we are gauging this is the area from where there is more crime happening we predict right so this is something that could be ethically you know a little challenging right and seamless data transfer we agree no problem right so do remember the the issues this is not about only privacy this is also about other issues related and then you also point out the general if you don't get data don't you worry what are the issues with integrated system integrated system issue is finances technology issue is uh, accessibility issue is uh, uh, you know uh, awareness awareness means the way these systems operate everybody doesn't know police doesn't know many policemen or police women they don't even know how to write leave apart operating uh, uh, this uh, complete integrated system right so look at the example so many lakhs and lakhs of registrations have been filed online and this has saved a uh, huge humongous amount of uh, noting hours 94 percent of investigation time is consumed in interviewing witnesses and writing diary entries imagine that 30 percent of victims don't report the crime 50 60 percent victims firs are not recorded and only 10 to 20 percent fir is written see so this is the reason that if we make the system more robust more integrated right through interoperable uh, crime justice system right this will be a great step ahead all right so this is the update but this reminds me of one question you people had asked and the question was sir what is the meaning of uh, remand yaad hai amlan do you remember so i thought i'd create a separate video on this but then you know uh, let me discuss it right now so that there's a topic here bailable and non bailable let's understand some of the technical terms related to policing policing ones so uh, bailable and non bailable offenses bailable offenses are those for example those crimes which can be bailed or those cannot be bailed they are differentiated through crpc criminal procedure code right that code will be followed for bailable offenses if you have committed a spe specific kind of offense those in which you know uh, the gravity of punishment may not be more the gravity of offense is not more if you have committed murder you will not get bail right if you have slapped somebody you might get bail right if you have offended somebody uh, verbal abuse right or you know what what people call as manhani right so uh, so all that can be bailed right then comes uh, uh, other kind of offenses like compoundable and non compoundable offenses do you know what this is compoundable and non compoundable offenses the third one is cognizable and non cognizable offenses right so cognizable offenses are those cognizance cognizance where the police can take cognizance and proactively act on it right for example if the police has seen x person stabbing y person they don't need to go to uh, the judge to be able to you know get a uh, uh, you know approval to put these people behind bars they don't right suppose police has seen some specific crime happening so police has got some important duties here to be able to operate without with you know with complete proactivity in case of cognizable offenses all right then what is compoundable and non compoundable 
see there are some kinds of uh, 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 crime which can be I would like you to re respond if you are aware of it compoundable and non-compoundable similarly uh, and and when crime is committed so one one supply chain of the you know when the crime is committed so when the crime is committed uh, first of all commitment of crime after that it is reported right after that police files fir fir and after fir is filed then you know they they also might uh, file the fir against an individual against few people or it could be against unknown persons right mob violence is a good example so suppose if it is again known persons or unknown persons either of the cases investigation will start off right and if it is again known persons if you remember the rights of persons they will be taken to a judicial magistrate within one day and after that they will be in a lockup right now lockup and after being taken to the judicial magistrate they will say that you know inko bail dena hai ki nahi dena hai, whether they have to be given bail or not if not then they will send they will be they will not be sent to lockup they will be sent to jail interim period right and then the police will be meanwhile conducting the investigation forensics police everything will be investigating the crime and they will be preparing a charge sheet charge sheet and if this crime has been committed against the state for example offending integrity or you know the dignity of a woman crime against state uh, murder crime against state decoity crime against state so these are the kind of crimes where if the crime has been committed the state will be one of the parties I as a victim won't have to you know uh, uh, hire a lawyer the state will be giving me a lawyer competent lawyer public prosecutor and they will be fighting the case the defendant will have to have a separate lawyer for themselves all right so uh, charge sheet will be filed and then it will be presented to the judiciary to the court and after that the dates will begin tarikh pe tarikh tarikh pe tarikh tarikh pe tarikh tarikh pe tarikh court pe court court pe court lower court right and then we have the district court and then we have high courts and this is how it will proceed right so uh, this is the whole system and after this if the person has been uh, uh, you know found guilty then they will be given the sentence they will go back to jail to serve that sentence the number of days years they have already served they, that will be subtracted from the rest of the term and in case there is a further appeal suppose they they were you know they were not convicted they were they, they were you know uh, acquitted so in that case uh, what happens is that there is a further appeal and uh, some people uh, you know uh, might be powerful enough to you know have a case in which uh, the person who was acquitted they can be you know put behind bars again in that case uh, the person will be languishing in jails as an under trial under trial because many people will be appealing against these kind of judgments no so those people will appeal they will be under trials and many of the people in the court these years in India are under trials right and they might not even have committed the crime so this is the complete supply chain now when the person is in jail and okay there is a marriage in their home its daughter's marriage and they have to suppose it is lifelong imprisonment until death it has happened no yesterday day before yesterday there was a judgment on Ahmedabad blast case where I think 38 people they were it was the first time in India that 38 people have been given uh, the uh, punishment of hang, getting hanged till death right so well, lower court only there will be further appeals and then there will be a lot of things after this point is that uh, 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 when uh, when when the persons are languishing in jails for years and years and if there is a marriage or certain important you know somebody's very close relative is dying can they go out and meet them for once yes for law is given to, to them for, for this purpose for law for law is the process right and the uh, bail, bail is provided with conditions that you won't leave the city, you will be conducting, you will be participating in investigations, you will be uh, not leaving the country, you will also let the police know in case you are going out somewhere. So this is interim bail, this is while investigation is getting carried out, right? And then there is something called as remand, remand, sending them back, remand means sending people back. So uh, when you know there are times when the police wants to conduct an investigation they might ask the judiciary that you send the person to us we want to conduct an investigation in their times when you know the uh, accused is also beaten up in the lockup right custodial deaths all those things happen no so this is when police takes people in remand to be able to interrogate them right interrogate them and understand what was the time of uh, incident what was the cause various things they will counter question 
and then there is judicial custody where uh, the person is sent to the jail and uh, uh, if in case there is some uh, investigation that has to be carried out it can be carried out there as well right but then police asks for police remand as well at times right so this is the update here yeah you have written here Hima and Netra great so you people have written uh, about compoundable and non-compoundable offenses. Compoundable offenses are those which are minor offenses. For example, if uh, X has slapped Y, slapped, police knows that this is not good, right? This is not a civil litigation also. This is offending somebody, right? Integrity of uh, the human body, somebody else's, privacy, all those things. But then police thinks that there is a possibility that these people can be they, they can be compromised they can be settlement so those offenses where settlement is possible where the case need not be you know uh, it need, need not reach the judiciary or even if it, it has reached the judiciary the judge says please compromise between yourselves compoundable offenses all right and cer certain cases which there'll be no in which there'll be no compromise for example uh, hurting the modesty of a woman, no, no compromise to be, you know, heard here. Even if, you know, the, the person says, I'll marry her, not to be heard. If she was raped, not to be heard in those kind of cases. In case uh, people are there to give money, in case somebody has, you know, run over the other person, giving finances, no, not done. It is a crime against the state, it cannot be compounded, alright. So these are examples of it. Okay, great. Understood? Absolutely. So moving ahead to the second update that is on uh, green tariff in electricity. See, uh, the tariff in electricity is only reducing in, in our country. And this is a good sign also in a way. The tariff especially for solar and uh, wind power has gone down to as low as uh, 2 rupees, 2 and a half rupees per unit. On the other hand, if you see the tariff or uh, you know, average tariff for other places, the tariff is high. So the government says that uh, this benefit of low tariff should be passed on to the consumers, no? If they are purchasing the tariff from green energy production, they must be charged accordingly. So an average of this tariff will be charged to the persons who are purchasing green energy, right? So this is green tariff in electricity. Government plans to have a separate green tariff for consumers who wish to procure their entire power needs from renewable energy sources. Is it good or bad? If they want to procure everything from green energy sources, renewable energy sources, this is good in some regard. Why? Because the demand for green energy is not as high. Because firstly, it is not reliable. It is not available full time. Then uh, there are additional issues. It is not available throughout the country. Right? Then uh, uh, what about the availability might be there, but there will be supply bottlenecks. For example, during daytime, higher supply. During nighttime, only battery supply. So less power can be pumped during those times. There are various challenges, right? So this is one challenge, but advantages there. So advantages, you should be looking at these articles. You have covered them already. So uh, if you remember Green Energy Corridor, abhi abhi kiya tha fir se. All right. Renewable Energy Investment Attractiveness Index. India is one of those countries, one of those few countries where uh, it is placed very highly in the Renewable Energy Attractiveness Index. We covered this article. I have placed the link here. So India was placed third, if I remember clearly, third, third among many other countries. So this is amongst the best uh, perform performers, right? Energy storage and power, right? If you remember, we had covered energy storage systems (ESS). How energy has to be stored in in these non-conventional and renewable forms? Remember? So potential energy, putting the water up right during daytime because of solar energy and then ensuring that HEP flows out of it uh, throughout the whole day. This is one battery storage systems. This was another one. Then flywheel. Do you guys remember? We had covered this last week, last to last week, I think. So these are all allied systems which will help you understand the green, uh, green energy that we are discussing right now, right? So right now we discuss an update on the pricing, the pricing mechanism. <coughs> We have also covered alternate articles on the same renewable energy certificate. So if you remember, it was a mandate that every industry will have to will be obligated to purchase certain minimum uh, green energy. And when they purchase it, they will be given renewable energy certificate. If they do not purchase, then they will also be liable to uh, pay some, uh, you know, finances for this. Right. So we covered this part uh, completely. Right. What is the update here? See some other decisions which have been taken. Have we covered? Oh, yes, we have covered. So, uh, one of the decisions taken was that 
इंटरस्टेट ट्रांसमिशन टू बी फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट वेव वेव ऑफ इंटरस्टेट ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ ग्रीन एनर्जी सो ग्रेट स्टेप हेड पावर मिनिस्ट्री थैंक यू वेरी मच राइट मे इलेक्ट टू परचेज ग्रीन एनर्जी ऑफ या दिस वी हैव कवर्ड ऑल राइट सो दिस इज दी so this is one of the updates also one more update is see we have covered this but i will share with you since we are covering the article par purchase agreements long term agreements used to happen between various parties long term agreements 35 years of agreement of par purchase right provide me you know 1000 units one one company says provide me 1000 units to say uh, tata power and this will be for 35 years what about the variable capacity need what about the needs during day and night during weeks during times of pandemic they will be suffering losses somebody will be suffering losses and that is why more par more flexible par purchase agreements have come so weekly weekly level par purchase agreements intra day level day level par purchase agreements they have also uh, come only lately these are new reforms in the par par sector now this will help in greater rationalization of power prices right so uh, yeah absolutely so and along with that you can add up everything for example prime minister's commitment to uh, increase the renewable potential up to 50% we will need 850 gigawatt out of that 50% 450 will be produced by renewable put it now right but then this is the update okay you guys with me okay what is the next one neutrino observatory project before we understand the details of this project let me uh, let me share something with you i have already given the links to both the other articles karnatak and kerala two more projects being carried out nearby only now you only tell me what should happen here now when you see the uh, any any part of india suppose this is uh, tamil nadu and here is where uh, one project was to get carried out the india's neutrino observatory right and then again in kerala there is a huge silver line project remember we had discussed that the train project silver line 65000 crores huge expensive project and then karnatak there was a uh, implementation of kasturi rangan committee report uh, committee report that you know fragile western ghat should not be hindered with karnatak said that no no we will not be able to implement this we want to ensure that you know economic development happens we will be subtle we will be careful kerala has gone ahead with this project but then there are many many segments of uh, the um, uh, you know the the people here polity here even the railway ministry they have objected to the project all right saying that there will be you know the detailed project report was not carried out properly there will be impact on landslide impact on the green cover so one economic project not happening here one scientific research project not happening here in tamil nadu so two places have objected because of uh, because of issues of uh, environment and forest and biodiversity preservation and and landslides and natural disasters all of it included right nahi karna hai to they will not do they will said this they have said this on the other hand karnatak says that they should carry out so this is a great example of how states are dealing with these projects right state clearances this is a very good example of federal indian polity just just sharing this is one the second level is that you have you know perspectives from both the sides one state not carrying it out or carrying out economic projects and two states objecting to it right on uh, the uh, environment grounds right so what are the impacts of these projects in general in general that you should know right so if it is environment being selected economy will be impacted science technology will be impacted the whole uh, scientific community will get impacted and if it is economy being selected environment will get impacted this is a very very sensitive area so let us understand this project in detail now now this is on india's neutrino observatory right why neutrino these are all these are neutral particles very small weightless particles and they travel from sun's nuclear uh, energy they they can penetrate each of us they have been penetrating all of us right but then there is there's so many radiations which are uh, all around that observation of this particular tiny particle almost weightless particle without any charge this particle does not interact with any anybody any other entity the study of this particle gets hindered if we try to study them at local levels right and that is why an observatory was getting created one more than 1 km below the earth surface at uh, theni 
so this was the appropriate site that was selected and this is where the uh, the project was supposed to happen it was supposed to happen for quite a while right this is the place we are talking of and uh, uh, the, uh, now kerala has objected to this project why has it objected is as simple as that right there is a tiger reserve here and uh, this is the place where from where you know tigers pass from one place to another periyar national park and then we have meghmalai tiger reserve all of them are popular places so what happened was that national tiger conservation authority ntca this is the authority which could approve if the project can be carried out in it you know in in, in a tiger sensitive area or not and they said yes please carry it out what body is this this is a central government authority right it approved who is the chairperson of this authority anybody environment minister or the prime minister so they said please type it out so they said that uh, uh, let's carry out this project here but then immediately after that tamil nadu government said we will not carry it out there are <clears throat> there are objections from the people locals this is a tiger sensitive area this is an area where you will carry out excavations you will be placing magnets below the earth and uh, this will you know damage the uh, the the place here right so bodhi hills of theni district the objection has been there for a decade plus right 10 12 years so finally they said that we won't carry it out but then there is a whole community bunch of community of scientists uh, illuminatis and aware people they are saying that um, they, they are requesting the kerala government to reconsider their order so if completed the project will have a 50 kiloton magnet the world's biggest so this is the point of contention people say we don't know what is the impact of this on us right ecological impact mathi ketan peria tiger corridor is there shola national park right endemic to this area is also here right those those forests which are there at the top of these mountains in the south shola forest right so this is the reason that uh, you know uh, the project has been in question now imagine the difference in two authorities ntca says that you got to carry it out whereas kerala government kerala government's uh, environment department said oh please reconsider this right in supreme court department is what you call in states and then ministry is what we call in central government right so environment department in the state and environment ministry in the center all right this area is endemic to pl plant species fishes amphibians reptiles so many of them states position in an appeal pending in the supreme court against ngt's decision to uphold the environment clearance all right so tiger corridors that is the update prime minister great guys you you, you guys know it yahima 11 districts through 11 stations and uh, 200 km per hour traveling uh, the uh, distance of around uh, what 500 kilometers and uh, covering it around 4 hours yeah great hima i i love it when you people you know i was myself not data driven previously that was my shortcoming but then i understood that there is a power in data right provided it is used at the right places so uh, please do remember this is where uh, you know natural ability to memorize will not uh, will not play as much significance as your discipline to revise right so there are many people there are many people amongst us who are very talented extremely talented but talent is of no use if we are not using it well if you are not disciplined if you are not determined and if it doesn't happen day by day right so we are cooking a biryani here it looks slow every day we gain opinion rather than trying to look at see we have had some people who have been demanding monthly monthly magazine and uh, the yearly magazine this is where i say that you know this will this will not serve the purpose because all we need is a determination day by day approach not a uh, you know monthly and uh, yearly this will not even get completed this is the first thing and the second thing is it will not even store in the mind for long right it will subline all right this day in history dedicated to international mother language day right so 1999 unesco united nations educational scientific and what is this cultural organization yes one of the organs of united nations and uh, they initiated this mother language day a very important uh, day uh, this was an initiative of bangladesh and uh, you know why bangladesh because bangladesh got freed on one important ground only na that ground was language when urdu was imposed on bangladesh also this is where people you know they opposed this should not happen 
and then there were other persecutions also funds finances were not coming from west pakistan to east pakistan then administrators from west pakistan would come military administrators and they would dictate upon the people in east east uh, pakistan bangladesh erstwhile so uh, not only that uh, when when we see this kind of uh, you know opposition see west side speaks the language of urdu east speaks bangla so why are we enforcing urdu on uh, or uh, you know imposing only one state language on people here right this has happened in tamil nadu in uh, in in sri lanka as well right sri lanka so what happened here is uh, sinhala's community and then tamilians tamilians in minority sinhala language was imposed on them in the 80s and this is where the ltt movement started all right finances and all everything all of them similar everywhere this will happen right wherever there is persecution some or the other kind of discrimination was met now that that is the reason oh by the way this question was a part of the pre exam pre exam and why pre exam kitni baar bataun 1971 bangladesh liberation and 2021 your examination 50 years of bangladesh liberation right that is why this question was asked 50 years of bangladesh liberation we had expected something they asked on language no problem so see uh, but we can't cover such everything about bangladesh no that is the point so at least we understood that this is how ups asked questions but you should know this all thing is it was in news it was in news when india was celebrating india also won over pakistan in this war so all this was in news right so which is the country which, in, which initiated international day of uh, mother language bangladesh so this was a part of pre question all right so this year's theme is using technology for multilingual learning challenges opportunities all right and then 6000 languages and we are we are losing a language every two weeks right vulnerable language remember we had studied those languages spoken by less than 10000 people and uh, many languages of this kind almost lost yes okay now uh, peach news inventions and patenting in patenting in india we will understand this complete theory of what patenting is about we will knit bare the complete history of patenting in india and also understand what is happening abroad what are the issues what are the allegations of developed countries on india how does india counter them what india does about this so a beautiful feature news immediately after this uh, current affairs discussion all right this image of the day is on the army tag uh, which has been given to this gecko what is gecko 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 is like these are the bigger lizards right and uh, uh, largely those animals which uh, 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 they are nocturnal in nature and then they stay you know in burrows the bigger in uh, size also and uh, evasive creatures very shy creatures they found now we have found a new species of these ge uh, gecko in meghalaya right and uh, they have been named as cretodactylus exercitus see you you can very well see the kind of um, color they the body has very very similar to what uh, the armed forces men also wear and this is what is called as camouflaging right so attributing to military that is it they also produce some kind of noise India is now home to 40 species of bent-toed geckos. Bento, they go. You see, the feet are turned, you know, a little, and then uh, 40 uh, species home to 40 species of bent-toed geckos, with northeast accounting for 16 of them. So northeast has got a greater diversity. Similarly, northeast also has got a greater biodiversity for uh, for uh, for uh, two, three more species that we had covered. One is uh, tortoise. and the other one is frogs yeah many of them It's found only northeast fishes as well all right so what's next india's new india literacy program this is a important literacy program for everybody adult education right so people to be educated through digital means through physical means both of them right so this program is for literacy of all those people who have uh, already gained age not school but adult uh, education program so you should remember this new india literacy program approved a new scheme new india literacy program during fiscal year 2022 2027 so this literacy will not only be about uh, you know understanding english language this will also be dealing with daily life understanding for example uh, 
how to operate a cell phone digital literacy so cell phone right how to do transactions how to save money where to save money right so all these things what is insurance regular understanding will also be given to people so that uh, uh, you know their awareness increases so remember new india literacy program because we have been covering programs related to students no so uh, rashtriya madhyamik shiksha abhiyan right uchchatar shiksha abhiyan and then we also had rusa uh, we also had sarv shiksha abhiyan in what not right so this is for adults do remember this name whenever you talk of uh, you know uh, the uh, education of the adult population in the country right so what is adult population just 18 years plus now they are employable now so to improve the employability of the persons to improve their social awareness economic awareness this programs are being held okay all right uh, the ministry has also decided to use education for all instead of adult education as the previous term did not appropriately represent all non literates in the 15 years and above age group all right it has uh, started to use education for all term instead of adult education right okay good example this one indo bangladesh protocol route now this is a protocol route which was agreed between these two countries to be able to transport commodities goods over river water or uh, howsoever between these two uh, countries see so india and then bangladesh here so when you see bangladesh right here and india is to the left and to right if we could connect both these places this would be great so we are connecting uh, kolkata or uh, uh, the banks of kolkata havda these regions to haldia and from haldia we are linking it to some of the other routes along the rivers many braided channels of ganges and brahmaputra and uh, you know taking it back to uh, karimganj and from there uh, further uh, north uh, uh, e either it could be karimganj or going back to assam and other places in assam right for example pandu dhubri all those places in assam so this is there are various routes which have been formed you should remember one or two of these routes one of the good routes that you can remember is from kolkata to haldia to uh, pandu right so this is one of the routes then another route is uh, pandu to karimganj right so if there is no direct connect connectivity both the places are in northeast only but they will flow through bangladesh this is a great thing right ibp route indo bangladesh protocol route right for transit of uh, goods commodities between uh, one place in india to the other using port of calls what are the port of calls so these are the places uh, you know transit port where goods can be picked up they can be uh, dropped for intermediate stops of scheduled uh, journey ships all right this protocol which was first signed in the year 1972 was renewed in the year 2015 for a period of 5 years automatic renewal of this protocol route all right but what is the problem is that uh, this is the maiden voyage my dear friends maiden voyage first first from haldia to pandu haldia in uh, west bengal and pandu in assam right why why it's because of our inland if you remember we had discussed months back 5 4 my 5 months inland uh, uh, river transport bill right so this bill also was to get created in the you know uh, as an act in the parliament and law and then through this we wanted to channelize the, the waterways of india channelize utilize them well create you know a network of uh, vehicles just like we have vehicles on road we should give them these vehicles also these boats also registration numbers right they should have a life so in creating the whole inland river economy but this was all stalled this is one reason one reason why we have lagged then we have other things around the river ecology for example the maintenance of Uh, the complete river ecology all and the funding technology driven everything has been pending today itself i was watching a part of this today it was live on youtube and from doordarshan they were transmitting it uh, president's fleet review president's fleet review so this is a part of india's legacy in culture india has gained in olden times the how would we show legacy how would we show allegiance to the uh, king or to the person who is at the uh, who is the shahanshah raja how would we do that 
what we would do is we would bring all the armory right we would bring all horses and they would come galloping and there'd be guns and we'd give them salute right there'd also be tanks salute in this form or you know tanks their barrels would go down right this is how we salute the uh, people who are at the helm of affairs at par and what it does is that the president or the person who is the king they would know that yes yes uh, these are owned by me and when there's the time of need i will be the one who is utilizing them so this similar tradition was followed has been followed by india even post independence where the president takes a fleet review fleet review all the uh, vessels carriers all the important uh, developments that have happened in the navy they are showcast they are they are shown to the president and they are shown once in their whole term one not it's not a yearly activity once in the whole term by diesel lagta hai it takes a lot of thousands and thousands of men preparing for days and days yeah so don't ask it for a, you know yearly function this happens once through the, the whole uh, tenure of the president this is the 12th fleet review that has happened right now right so display and display of allegiance and the uh, showcase of the expertise that the country has right atmospheric pressure on pluto so atmospheric pressure on pluto is 80000 less than that of earth all right this is one update pluto why do i want to remember this is because this was uh <laughs> pluto the animal the dog in cartoon network along with that pluto is also a dwarf planet do remember what a dwarf planet is like orbit not clear and why is it not clear is because here we have uh, the uh, kuiper belt kuiper what is the spelling anybody uh, k u i p e r kuiper belt far bigger than the asteroid belt between earth and mars this belt has uh, started to exist after after neptune and that is the reason that uh, pluto was thrown out of the planetary system right and the study has also pointed that the occlusion or the you know uh, uh, was seen as as the dwarf planet is moving away from galactic plane visible from the earth making the occlusions rarer right so this uh, body has been moving away from us there is a seasonal variability in pluto's atmospheric pressure due to vapor pressure from the nitrogen ice all this okay a very very long time in which pluto revolves around the sun 250 years editorials of the day what do we have i remember having uh, not spoken about a very important part of the defense uh, engagements that we covered uh, on the friday that was that india's investment in uh, uh, investment of gdp or, or investment in uh, the defense budget is only around 2% india's total defense budget and research and development is only 2% whereas developed countries spend 10 to 12% on their uh, uh research and development defense budget only i'm saying if it was 5 and a half lakh rupees 5 and a half lakh lakh crore rupees so india's expenditure in defense budget for research and development was hardly 2% they should be spending more when country knows that they need more why are they importing it it is still less as compared to the developed countries right so this is one issue with india's defense investment the other is that uh, uh, we have allocated only 25% of defense research development for the private industry whereas we are privatizing opening the defense sector 75% of fdis in defense we are doing it on the other hand we are giving only a lesser sum of money for defense budget for private investments why we should increase this no so these are some critiques which are pointing towards shortcoming in the, the in the defense research and development all right so this is the quick update here about uh, these two important data can be taken from here right all right the imperial roots of india china rope this is a very, very interesting editorial it talks about the origins of india china dispute especially at aksai chen region aksai chen so if you know this region in the map this is at the you know the right the right jewel the right crown uh, jewel in the crown right right side and it has been occupied by china this is owned by india now the historical legacy is such that britishers also had challenge in maintaining their dominance over a position like the or a place like this the reason was that see earlier the policy was very simple the natural regions will be the natural borders for example if 
there is a river flowing from a specific place suppose this is the place where river is flowing then this river will be the boundary between the two states another example if this is the command area of the river or watershed area of the river right all the rivers feeding here and this is the complete watershed area of the river that means all these you know regions are linked to each other the water the hydrology so this will be complete territory this will be our territory similarly another rule was that if there are mountains linear mountain chains then the chain of mountains if this is how mountain exists this is my domain and this is your domain i had gone to ladakh two years back i saw the same thing happening there i gone to these places where there are uh, disputes happening right now so the the area so our driver was saying sir this you see this mountain i said yes so the plains which are just next to the mountains this is ours the mountains they have their own bunkers there that is theirs china's so this is how it was demarcated by the britishers and why so the one thing was shortage of uh, avenues to mark demarcate borders they didn't have resources enough also this area was not important to them economically geographically strategically they said such a high altitude terrain area and there is nobody residing let's leave it out these natural borders will exist but after independence this is what india got in legacy uh, especially in aksai chin area why because these are high altitude areas and uh, the uh, the mountains are not linear there are many many complex chain of mountains we don't know which is the boundary between the two countries so china first of all you know if you remember the short history that i had covered for china uh, uh, 1912 the imperial power came to an end and then there were two political for parties formed socialist party and then there were capitalist people the capitalist people flew to uh, taiwan and uh, the uh, and called it republic of china and then the people's republic of china the socialist party was formed and then uh, uh, it it gained power in 1949 onwards they started consolidating the whole empire the complete state right and one of the part was annex annexation of tibet and slowly and steadily they also annexed those parts of india which in which were owned by india but which were also thought by china as their own right because they felt this is buddhist area arunachal pradesh aksai chin so this is how they claimed and this is how they have formed territorial boundaries here this is the this is what india has gained in legacy from britishers now the reality of this place is this that many of these places were used for transit by monks by religious people who were moving from one place to another by people who were were trading but it was not inhabited all the time that was the uh, situation but right now both the countries with such humongous resources such major pollution uh, population and they are fighting over this kind of resource so this is the present level of uh, engagement between these two countries this is uh, not uh, appreciable right as uh, the article mentions so one place of conflict was demchok this is another place which was a border border uh, you know uh, town for uh, trading activities right if you remember i had shared with you people uh how you know the chinese or india would move ahead in a place like this so uh, let me share with you uh, show you the image first uh where are the images i'll show you yes yes this is one of the images which is very relevant so one of my own uh, uh, friends very close family friend he would he, he was posted here so what he would tell me is that he was himself given the authority by the uh, commanding officer of his unit that he should be every day seeing the mobility of the chinese uh, tanks and their artillery and their uh, uh, you know their complete armed forces day by day so every day he would uh, you know place the phone camera at the same place over a few stones and he would click photographs of the whole region right landscape mode uh, portrait mode photographs of the whole region and he would see that slowly and steadily chinese would be advancing so they would advance every winter towards us and they would retreat back every time earlier these areas they were not claimed by anybody chinese also would patrol we would also patrol but now if they are laying down permanent settlements india is questioning this because it was never a part of 
the permanent settlement right so every day he would see that there is you know the chinese are coming a little closer further closer to us and this is how he would report so not that only chinese would do it indians also would do it and nobody would come to know because there was no earmark boundaries since they were here not not marked boundaries but they were you know marked points suppose this was a point this was a point and this was a point so china would say that we connect like this and this is china uh, all right uh, uh, and this is china china would want more territory you know you would say i would connect like this india would say no you connect like this this is our territory so this were the points of contention and they still are this is the present level of engagement between both, both the countries largest population yet fighting over those kind of resources the article says such which is not significant for the population geography terrain etc all right the case study for today is going to get discussed but before that if you like this initiative share some love through like comments and shares questions please put them down all right so what are the comments here uh, people are saying near bodhi hills yes theni somik ministry of environment okay Pooja says, sir, I am watching your videos daily, but I am not able to make notes. Please help, sir. I have exhausted this hour. Okay, Pooja uh, and everybody else who are participating here in the videos, it is important that you make notes. Otherwise, uh, definitely, this is true that you would not be able to, uh, you know, retain this for long, right? How to utilize this for yourself? This will be a question. And uh, this is where I will recommend you to watch a few videos, a couple of videos of how to make notes on current affairs. I will share this in the offline chat, Pooja. In offline chat, you will be able to see the link to uh, how to make notes, right? All the other people are doing it on the same lines. Uh, so can you. Just have a look at this video, that video, I think 30-35 minutes. And then uh, we will get back to you sharing, you know, if you have questions, sharing more information about it. Amlan says, sir, I googled the chairperson of NDCA's Ministry of Environment and Forest. Oh, look at that. What a catch. Thank you. And I think this was also asked someday in the questions. They, they were asked quite a few times in our test series when I used to, you know, participate. And probably this was one of my uh, weak points then. So, are you sure it is the environment minister, Amlan, Somik? Because everybody else has written in prime minister. All right. Ah, yes, Netra. Yes, Amlan, great, great data again. Himan National Waterway 1 and 2. National Waterway 1 is representative of Ganges and 2 of Brahmaputra. Kush, good evening. Kuiper Belt, great. Natural boundary responsible for dispute. Example, Kalapani. Yes, Kalapani is again disputed area. We have studied that between both the countries, uh, China and uh, India, uh, Nepal and India. Case study of the day, barefoot scientist. So this gentleman, he is from uh, Karnatak and he has created at least 30 of innovations which he has utilized in his own uh, area of uh, cultivation or other people, right? And for this, he has also gained the Padma Award. So a person who is uneducated, illiterate can also, uh, you know, create wonders. So, he, one of the items that he created was a water alarm to ensure that water in a justified manner could be utilized in the fields. Another one was de-seeder, right? So, tamarind de-seeder, imli de-seeder, simple but yet so effective. Automated sugarcane sewing machines. These are common innovations that one can utilize. Similarly, we had studied one case I remember a couple of months back about a girl. She had invented 8-in-1 machine in which uh, she would help in uh, uh, you know her mother in everyday kitchen chores simple innovations and these are the simple innovations that puja i am talking about while we do answer writing adec follow the principle while you make notes right a quick understanding about it An analysis data example keywords and cases uh, and keywords all these have to be represented for each of the items that we discuss and you have to do it paper wise paper uh, Subject wise, so polity and governance one, economy one, science technology another one, geography, environment, disaster management another one. And similarly, you will have for international relations and defense, uh, in, internal security, ethics another one. And what did we miss? Society, social issues one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We missed one more component uh, and that could form that uh, the leftover, right? So, eight of these components representing eight parts of the syllabus. This is what we have explained in that video. 
so if you do this you know many themes will get covered and you will be able to revise it systematically that is more important right so this is how we cover the current affairs for today we will quickly meet in the next video for feature news right interesting feature news on hold for you all right so thank you for watching i will see you in the next video right now